All right, I haven't done any markups so far this morning, so we will do that on the stream. Anything to look for? That's just Ryan asking for the news. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's head over to Trading View and take a look at our chart. So yesterday, before we entered the stream, we looked at the potential model right here. We didn't take that. We just ditched the price action being like that. Really, the only thing that played out was the short after taking the high of the day. I guess the DXY moved back to the upside after taking out that buy side liquidity. Yes, it did. Putting in sort of a head and shoulder setup, but negating it and simply continuing on a rally again to the upside. That's why I like to focus on the daily time frame. And so far, the DXY bounced off this daily bullish share value gap and is now inside the first daily bearish share value gap. So we can label this as our daily bearish share value gap. Mm, right here. See how we do inside here and also the 50%. This will have an impact on the indices. <clears throat> If the DXY continues to go up higher today, we will likely see lower prices on the indices. So let's get rid of all the drawings that we had from Monday. Reload the indicator. No, I've got it two times. Get rid of that sell side liquidity. All right, so um, let me go to the settings. Previous days high, previous days low. Something is off here. What's happening? Friday, Monday. If I do it like that on a ES1 chart. <laughs> Something's going on. We will see. We'll fix that after the stream. We have our midnight level. Previous day high, previous day low is not being drawn correctly. Maybe if I turn it on and off, that will help. Nope, apparently not. It's still only showing me first day's high for some reason and not the high from yesterday. Anyway, we just do it manually today. Um, 15 minute time frame. Let's go to the one hour to look for major liquidity. But first, let's take a look at the daily for our bearish fair value gap right here. Then take the four hour buy side, then take out this daily buy side. Here's our daily volume and balance. Daily buy side up here, and Q actually managed to. Let's look at the daily here. To reach the daily volume and balance, and also to take out daily liquidity. Starting to look bearish here on the daily time frame. Drop it back to the 15. To keep an eye on it put in a nice bottom here let's see what it looks like on the s now if we drop it down to the one hour daily so we have a bullish share value gap on the daily now on our chart mm, let me grab all these drawings from down here and put them into a group and hide them instead of deleting them mm, daily bullish share value gap done let's mark up the 50 percent middle line make it black and a dotted line this would be an area of interest for us we had 
the new week opening gap. Let's draw this in as well. No, not with settlement, without settlement. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny little one. No new day opening gap, also just a very small one. Let's take a look at it on a one hour time frame. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This is our daily bullish value gap. Put all these drawings into the same folder. Good. One hour time frame, obvious liquidity. Be the sell side pool right here. Let's look for our daily divider. I'm surprised that the ICT or the morning cater is doing that. First time that happens. Mm. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18. All right, that's when our new daily candle started. So right now, relatively speaking, we are already at the low on the one hour time frame. We have our sell side liquidity. This would basically be our previous day slow, if I'm correct. Yep. So this is Monday. Get rid of these two. Oh, this for our buy side. Simply label our previous week's high, the like the way we normally do it with the ICT all in one indicator. Previous week's high, previous day high, and we're gonna do this in orange. Our previous day slow in orange. Lining up perfectly with the bullish value gap. Let's draw in da, 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 when the daily candle is going to end. Right here. All right, then let's also grab that New York midnight level. Mm. Midnight comes in right here on this candle, so we're below midnight right now. New York midnight. And what else would be interesting? Let's look at the daily range from high to low. 50% from yesterday comes in right here. And the opening price today comes in right there. Which is also currently right now the high because we didn't get a wick to the upside. So, so far, looking at the open right here on the hourly time frame, all we saw is that price continued lower, left behind this bearish share value gap, failed the bearish share value gap and continued lower. We are now also below the midnight level. 50%. We took the sell side right here. Daily fair value gap, hourly fair value gap would start down there. All right, I think that's pretty much done. Let's label our new day opening gap as well. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 12 and make this in the color Green, a new week opening gap we have right here. Let's make this in a orange color. And on the new day opening gap, we can really hide the midline. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's drop it down to a 15 minute time frame now. <coughs> on a 15 we got all the insights without the noise now from the uh, with the noise but our main drawings originate from the hourly time frame 
here we have our new week opening gap. Let's refresh all these lines. Good, should be done. Daily bullish value gap. We have an idea that it's down there. So right now looking at the 15, we see the similar scenario that we saw on the one hour time frame. We opened up, we immediately continued lower living behind these two inefficiencies, rejected from the envoc, continued lower, our midnight open comes in right here, consolidate, we do not have a new fair value gap left behind since the one right here at 6 p.m. New York local time. All the other price delivery has been delivered very efficiently regard in regards to the wicks. So that's that. We get rid of that time label. We do not need that. We only have orange shorter news today, so we could be seeing a pretty boring day like yesterday as well. Mm, 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 mm. Right now, the only thing that stands out on the 15 is that we are inside this bullish value gap right here. I won't be drawing that one out. Market structure shift. Hmm. No. But looking at the 15 minute market structure, pretty obvious what we're inside of right now. Lower low, lower high, lower low, market structure shift, boom. That's what we're looking for, being at the low of the day. Our free indicator should load though. Mm, we've made all these drawings manually today, so we don't need them. Only want to see the power of free indicator to the right. There we go. Yeah, a pre bearish candle so far on the daily. Let's take a look at NASDAQ as well. Quickly, it opened up with a new day opening gap, filled the new day opening gap, and continued lower here. Let's take a look at it on a one hour time frame. Mm hmm. They're yeah, still playing around around the previous week's high. We took it out, previous day side, we rejected off a daily be a bearish volume imbalance. But so far we're still holding up within this area. Yesterday our total range has been 120 points on, e uh, on NQ. And only as we had a range of measuring tool, measuring from the high to the low of 25 points interesting all right so for our market structure shift what we need to see is these high to be, these highs to be taken on the 15 and on the five minute yeah same thing goes for that if we want to get long even before the london open this is what needs to happen because price looks much cleaner on the 15 right now and it's not moving too quick I'm simply going to stay on the 15. We have equal lows below here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Buy side above here. And above all these other highs right here. Relative equal highs, previous days high, previous days low, relative equal lows sell side below here but i don't think we're gonna get well we will see the short could also be coming in but because we're right now at the low of the day daily bearish candle we're not gonna look for a short really this fair value gap kept on holding <laughs> bullish value gap from Friday I'm gonna leave it over there buy side liquidity and right now we're just gonna follow market structure you can see the daily candle has no wick to the upside pretty rare that that happens that we start bearish right through Asia and don't even tick above it DXY is pushing, 
15 minute time frame has been on some sort of a extended rally to the upside we opened up only putting in place higher highs and higher lows also no tick to the downside right here similar to what we saw on the s p just right then but as long as it's pushing higher we would suspect lower prices on es and simply wait for our opportunity maybe with the dxy breaking shifting structure hitting the 50 percent of the daily bearish fair value gap because at some point yeah we kind of have to break okay this wouldn't work Yeah, but you get the idea this parabolic trend on a 15 minute time frame mm -hmm. go to the daily here keep an eye on our down in q we're gonna watch it on the 15. on in q we actually have a bearish value gap here yep let's see are there any questions on discord Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. I will take a look at it after the stream, make sure I can fix it. First time that ever happens. But I'm sure it's just a little silly bug. I mean, if an indicator is doing it correctly yesterday, there's there must be something off with the charts for it to not do it today. The charts, it's, the indicator like doesn't really think it's just following protocol. And if that protocol is correct and showing all that stuff correctly yesterday and the previous week, then we should see that same thing. Or sh we should see it work today as well. All right, midnight level equal lows. Close above here. Yeah, I like that. In case we get the market structure shift here already, let me open up YM. I have that trade away account drawing on my second chart. On the screen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No signals so far during the London kill zone, 2 a.m. Yep. Oh, yesterday was jobby. Right at the VWAP, and that reminds me of the VWAP on our chart. I forgot about that. VWAP comes in right here where we would expect or where we would look for our market structure shift. If we take a look at the midnight open VWAP, that's where we're at right now, bouncing against that. I'm going to leave both of them on here. Later, let's say, until after the London open or as the, the closer we get basically to the New York session where lots of volume comes in, those two VWAPs, stay merge into one. But if we trade to London session, I always like to have my first VWAP on the daily open and the second VWAP right here on the midnight level. And Q, and Q, and Q. Mm -mm 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 -mm. it's from like yesterday london 
if you haven't been watching the stream back then we took this short based on the market structure shift also at the high of the day well theoretically not the high of the day because we haven't taken that yet at this point in time but even afterwards price was just choppy which led to that little loss right here Yeah, and right now it's waiting time i'm gonna make me a cup of coffee i will be back in like two or three minutes All right, back and we're still doing nothing. 2 a.m. open up, no new momentum. We open up with a bearish volume imbalance. So we will see how that goes in Q. So, so still doing nothing. Same goes for YM. Well, YM is kind of pushing. Five minute time frame. Yeah, just going sideways here bumping into that midnight open and vive up but we keep an eye on it on the 15 that should be good enough for this morning no reason to break market structure down to more than that we form our high we form a lower low in order to count this as a market structure shift i would have liked to have seen this low to be taken and therefore also the price action is just too narrow what do you guys think, Ryan? Or do you count this as a structure shift if we manage to close above midnight? Or would you like to see the market structure shift here also to line up with the 15 minute? Because on the 15, counting this as a lower high, hmm, I'm not really sure. Lower high, failed to make a lower low. Well, maybe, but we need a decent displacement if we just close above this right here that fair value gap is going to be necessary we will see let's keep an eye on it on the five actually that's what we're set out to do um, that's the that's the hard part with the future wicks all on the same place looks different on the cfd yeah but it looks different on every cfd that's the issue <laughs> it looks different with black bull it looks different with um Oanda or with every other prop firm i've signed up with um funding pips like two weeks ago and i saw on their website they're partnered with black bull i like that because i assumed that 
the Blackboard Trading View chart has the exact same wicks, candle closes, blah, 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 like the chart that I would trade on on MT5. Well, that didn't turn out to be true. They had different liquidity providers apparently while being on the Black Bull server. I think that it's just manipulation and they can't really admit that in an open statement saying, yeah, well, our chart looks different. Even though we got the liquidity from the same broker, we are on this broker server because we manipulate the shit out of it. I don't know. That's at least what I think. Why else would you say you're partnered with Black Bull? And if you type your yeah MT5 server into MT5, it's literally saying Black Bull demo server two. Hmm. Let's see. Five minute time frame. Take a look at the DXY. really bullish week putting a doji in place and for a pullback i like that scenario nq is yeah kind of pushing es touch the midnight level now well if we happen to get a nice up closing candle here and close somewhere up here and leave behind a bullish share value gap closing above this bearish one i take the entry because really we found a low a lower high well theoretically if you would be trading right after the midnight open and we look at market structure closely where's my path tool mm, we had equal lows so we came from here found a lower high a lower low a lower high a lower low a lower high a higher low here we actually found a higher high so right here we had our first displacement leaving behind a nice bullish value gap leaving behind equal highs and making a lower low so right here this will kind of be the unicorn model where we take buy side and then go back to sell side we fill in an inefficiency and continue into the initial trend direction. It's actually good that we look at it at, uh, from this perspective on the five minute time frame. And then we found the low, our lower high, equal lows, and now equal highs. So if we break that, this would be sufficient for a market structure shift, I'd say. But first we have to break that with a similar up closing candle like we saw right here. Boom, we shift structure, we close above, we leave behind a nice inefficiency paired with the midnight, still failed. We left behind equal highs. Oops, I didn't want to do that. But right here, this really comes into play. So based on that unicorn model, we would expect resistance from this bearish share value gap, but with equal highs above, equal highs, more equal highs, bearish share value gap. Let's take a look at that stuff on the five minute time frame now. This has been respected too perfectly to ignore it. Mm, da, 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 took out equal highs, hit the new week opening gap, but we have a unfilled bearish share value gap up there. Here we actually have a balanced price range. We have a bearish share value gap that keeps up holding resistance. Then we close above it and look what we leave behind right here. A new bullish share value gap. That's lining up perfectly with the old bearish share value gap. That's what we call a balanced price range. We initially 
hold some sort of support, but manage to close below. Plenty of resistance if we want to move to the upside, but also some sort of a little, let's see what that would look like. No, not really, wouldn't work. Drawing a trend line here, we already tried to break it once, failed, made a lower low. And right now we're just consolidating here, usually after a consolidation, where I get the reversal or the continuation. So we'll keep an eye on that. But this trend line doesn't help us. BPR, I would focus on this bearish share value gap. New week opening gap, the new day opening gap. Buy side. Yeah, let's keep it simple and don't draw too many boxes on our chart right now. And Q again tapped the bearish share value gap. Want to see if on AES we see, get the same idea on the 15. 15 minute structure is a little bit cleaner. We move to the downside, we consolidate for a little pullback from a lower low, a higher high, equal lows and a lower high on that same candle. So I'm just gonna look at this one right here. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. At least that's what we would expect right now. We do not see that unicorn set up on the five minute where we first take buy side, take sell side, we find a inefficiency paired with this little breaker block. Actually, this one needs to be bearish. And to complete the analysis, what I sometimes do is invert my chart and look at it as if we're in a bullish scenario. Bullish scenario. We leave these equal lows, equal lows, equal lows behind, similar to what we got yesterday. Bounce off the new day opening gap, assuming that today we had a bullish daily candle. We have our previous days low right up here. Take out liquidity. We have the midnight below us now. We're bouncing off the wave up. So yeah, really, unless we get the market structure shift here, no reason to assume that we don't simply continue lower from here but we leave so many equal highs behind equal highs equal highs so that's what we really want to see even if we get above these equal highs we want to see the close above and not just a little wick because the wick would more sort of more indicate a sweep than a structure shift. <laughs> What's the time? Two twenty five. So in five minutes we get or one minute we get a new fifteen minute candle. Yeah, still indecisive. Mm -hmm. YM is giving a secondary short signal. We crossed over bearishly on the stochastic RSI on this candle, but unfortunately, no. Still got my settings wrong. GMT minus five. Okay, anyway, I thought that I missed the entry here, but it's all good. I don't take these secondary entries, even if they line up with the market structure. But usually what we would do, even on these signals, enter short with the market or place our sell limit right here once the candle is closed. Place our stop one tick above the high, like this, set our sell limit or sell stop in this case. Now sell limit would get filled somewhere here, but I only do this on the big arrows. 
last week we really had a blast with the strategy it really worked out super well i think i ended up with over six percent on my top step account but yeah i also got to say that before that week i was in like five percent drawdown i started reducing my risk more and more and more the further we like yeah traded into the week towards the end of the week but yeah that's not a signal i would take so go back to our es chart go to the five minute time frame and see how we closed yeah nothing really significant we have three equal highs and three equal lows the midnight level comes in almost at the 50 percent we reject off the midnight vwap up until then it's waiting time yesterday i had a conversation with a friend of mine in the meantime while we're waiting we don't really have to only watch the chart about backtesting and he asked me how close do i want to end up at my backtested win rate what would you guys say how close like say you have a win rate of 70 percent and you backtest your strategy and now you trade it live how close with what a with what kind of margin or tolerance do you want to trade or yeah trade around that specific win rate for example 70 percent okay ulrich what would what would you would like let's say 70 percent win rate or let, let it be 50 percent i don't care but how close in terms of percentages uh, do you want to hover around without any big variations 10 percent difference he told me that for there's something on the internet where you can calculate how much data points you need in your back test in order to actually get that variance most traders they back test like 200 300 trades on youtube maybe even just 50 and they say the strategy has a 80 percent win rate but with only 200 to 300 data points in your back test you actually get a variance of 25 percent over time because it's yeah basically yeah fuck all of a difference or yeah data points and if you really want to get super close let's say exponential curve to your win rate you need at least 20,000 data points and then after 20,000 executions you end up with a one percent variance at your yeah targeted win rate basically i know if that helped i would have liked to head the website with that but No, I would have to ask him first. I'll likely not find that website. All right, getting back to the chart. We took out these lows here. So we continue lower, just like we expected. We opened up with a bearish volume and balance, retested the VWAP and continued lower. In the meantime, why not take a few paper trades on our Apex paper trading account? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you have a strategy with like even just 500 trades in backtesting, it depends on your win rate. If you end up with a 70 or 80% win rate, on your strategy you can expect a 
yeah, fluctuation around that win rate of around 10 to 15, maybe even 20%. You still end up profitable depending on your risk tree board if you have a super high win rate. But if your strategy, for example, comes out at a 40% win rate and you only have 20 to 30 trades back tested, yeah, then you can't expect that after 10 or 20 trades, you end up at exactly that 40% win rate. That's basically all it says. <clears throat> In order to get really close to that, you need way more data points than most of the traders that do back testing actually take. I've got one good, uh, have one good friend on YouTube. Don't like him. Gotta say that. He's always testing or back testing these mechanical ICT trading strategies for like one month and then he's saying yep it's profitable 75 percent win rate i know that's all just marketing get funded in one hour per day let's take a look at it in the meantime nothing against the guy i understand that's how you get clicks and subscribers take a look at the mechanical ict strategy to get funded in one hour a day Thirty-four percent win rate. Results per month. Yeah. Well, the first comment already says it all. <clears throat> I think it's you're taking an entry on the first value gap. Might work well during one specific month, but that's really the point that I'm trying to make with the amount of data points that you need in order to really get close to your win rate and how many executions you dare for afterwards need in order to end up at that specific win rate. Take a quick look at ES. Continued lower, open with a bearish volume and balance retraced. We have a new bearish value gap and a new five minute market structure shift level. Right up here with the midnight level. <laughs> yeah, but screw that. First comment already debunked this entire strategy. 75% win rate. Yeah, maybe during one month. The only valuable thing is basically telling you strategies that don't work or maybe giving you ideas for or something to do, something to backtest. Headset yeah, so is working again. So once again, we open up with a bearish volume imbalance. We just filled 
the bearish volume imbalance right here with this five minute candle close and this happened from 230 until 235 so now 15 minute volume imbalance if i'm correct yep nothing on the 15. Mm, we have a volume imbalance right here on the 15. a double volume imbalance on the same level take a look at nasdaq nasdaq is also continuing lower of the bearish share value gap it's what we would expect or at least anticipate simply following market structure until we don't Twenty three percent. Already done. New day opening gap here on NASDAQ. Let's see uh, for our new week opening gap. I think we're right on that. Close open. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And we make that one orange. Yes, now hit this volume imbalance. Let's see what we do around this level. Five minute time frame. Well, we still have to wait for the displacement above. Mm -hmm. We hit 0 0.5 standard deviations. We do not have any lower fair value gaps here on the five minute time frame. So we would need to go to the one minute to find one where we could potentially see some support. No, nothing right here, nothing in this most recent price leg to the upside. So we want to see if we manage to close below this bullish share value gap. Looks like it's going to do that right now. Like we said when we inverted the chart, wouldn't expect anything else than simple continuation higher Once when we inverted it. Same thing we're doing right now. DXY likely continuing to push almost at the 50% of our daily bearish share value gap now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Bullish share value gap. So right here we expand take sell side we really struggle moving away or like moving above that weave up we open with a bearish volume imbalance continue lower take that sell side open with a bearish volume imbalance and another bearish volume imbalance now for the continuation lower what we would like to see or what i would like to see would be the close below this bullish share value gap the lowest five minute bullish share value gap right here and then we could maybe even use it as inversion for a little paper trade here so we we'll have at least something to do the secondary signal one candle after the stochastic rsi crossed over would it uh, would have hit break even had it hit a 1.5 risk to reward two to one hasn't been hit just yet made a lower low and q is now let's look at the five minute also in that lowest five minute fair value gap. Now we actually have one down here that we use to that we use as support. So if you would have traded the PM session, we had the sell off. 
had a pullback, failed to make a lower low. Right here, we would have had our market structure shift. Do we have a fair value gap inside of this price lag here on the five minute? First of all, we could look at the consecutive up closing candles as our breaker block because it's really big. I would limit it to the highest up closing candle right here and label this as our breaker. And we had a tiny little five minute bullish share value gap inside that breaker. We expanded pretty aggressively, closed above, shifted structure, leaving behind the fair value gap. Perfect protocol, we place our limit order. Stop loss would really have to be a bigger one. So, and because we haven't had the big daily range, entry would have looked something like this, right here on that fair value gap. Stop loss below the slow, target a one to one. Would have been hit pretty quickly. Even a two to one. No, two to one wouldn't have been hit using a relatively big stop loss, just covering this entire breaker block and even this short term low right here. If you place your stop loss super tight, well, you can do that to increase your risk to reward, but this will also decrease your win rate. 1.5. 50 points on NQ would have been a fine target. 1.5 risk to reward. And especially if we didn't really saw a nice movement during the AM session, we get our setup during the PM session here on NQ. Well, of course we could have simply continued further to the upside, but looking at the time, we consolidated for a long time and then just here at 15.50, the injection of liquidity right here during the power hour, so the last hour of the New York Stock Exchange trading, 15.55, we get that move to the upside and then it's 4 p.m. New York local time. That's just before we don't get any movement anymore at all, after 4 p.m. And yeah, at least here you could have closed that 1.5 risk to reward, knowing that it's only 10 minutes left where we have decent volatility. Yeah. No reason to wait for your three to one or two to one, especially with futures we cannot hold overnight. Unless you get a swing trading account. All right, let's take a look at ES. ES closed right at the low, then open up with a new volume imbalance. So it rejected here and didn't invert the bullish share value gap. Like we said, we closed right here at the low, continued lower. YM and the DXY is about to hit the 50%. London Open comes in in 12 minutes. La, 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 let's see. Daily bullish share value gap comes in below the low. But yeah, really looking at yesterday, that's the only piece of clean price action where we got the 2022 model here on NQ. Let's take a look at that exact period on ES. We shifted structure. We failed to make a lower low. Did we leave behind a fair value gap? Yes. Did we fill it? Nope. So we wouldn't have gotten the entry during the PM session here on ES. We filled the fair value gap up here. But yeah, looking at the time, we only have 20 minutes already left of decent volatility or movement, momentum. Boom, we got the push to the upside. For a little scalp maybe, a couple of points. Five points, quick in and out. Mm, no, but no, nothing proper like we saw in NQ where we actually retrace into the fair value gap and then continue higher from there. Pull in the high, now we're starting to retrace deeper and deeper.
Other than that, we can't really do much more other than waiting. Now we open up with a bullish volume imbalance and we close below our bullish fair value gap. So let's flip that into a inversion fair value gap and place a little limit order. It's only 10 minutes until the New York open, so two more five minute candles. We have our higher time frame liquidity pool or maybe the draw on liquidity right now. Previous day slow with a daily bullish fair value gap below, below us after forming a doji yesterday, expansion to the downside. We could see that and simply leave the Asia session high intact and continue lower without ever getting back to this level. This would be labeled as a trending, a bearish trending day. After Monday consolidated right at the high. Putting in some sort of a evening star pattern on the daily time frame. Doesn't have to, it's just another possibility. Let's see what we can do. We're on the paper trading account, yes. At a sell limit right here. We have to wait now anyway until we displace above this high, leave behind, retrace into our fair value gap and continue higher for our two to one. Until then, let's just take a few paper trading scalps and see how that goes. See if we can hold resistance on that new inversion fair value gap now. We do not have a bearish fair value gap other than this one up here. Can add one more contract right here on this old low. Simply following market structure, looking for a pullback and a continuation lower. Mm -hmm. Already added for one hour now. Yeah, I know my high and low is also not uh, showing it correctly on the ICT all in one indicator. I'm not sure what's off with it. Maybe it's the UTC time zone. That's the only thing that would make sense. Uh, now I have to turn on the previous day high, previous week high and low. <laughs> Let's see. But that happened yet didn't happen yesterday, so that it's really weird. Now now it's showing it correctly. All you have to do is modify your UTC time zone to minus five. Then you can turn on your daily divider again, day of week, Sundays, midnight open, 8.30 open, daily open, new day opening gap, new week opening gap, VWAP, and everything should be drawn correctly again. Yep, we still have our drawings on our chart, doing the exact same thing. Turn on the VWAP here on the ICT all in one as well. The daily open, we do not need that. We get that from our power of free indicator. Standard deviations, let us let me quickly take a look at those. Zero point five, positive zero point five, negative one would deliver us today all the way into the NFP and efficiency here. Interesting. Turn on that. Positive zero point five lines up perfectly with the daily volume imbalance. Let's just keep an eye on that. Those are reversal points where I would look, especially the positive one and negative one. Where I would look for 2022 model and where I would add or use more risk at least. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Kill some backgrounds, we do not really need that. We can take a look at the kill zone boxes and turn off the London and New York kill zone to see the Asia session on our chart.
A shallow has been taken. We made these lower lows from here. Here we have the Asia high, new day opening gap. Still from our drawing, the new week opening gap. We don't need these drawings anymore. The indicator is doing the work now. modify the color of the new week opening gap and make that orange and the new day opening gap is going to be a little shady green here Ryan I hope it worked for you too modifying your time zone setting to UTC minus five was already on minus five and it's still not working. It just popped up randomly. Hmm. That's weird. So right now we open up with a new five minute candle, 2.55. So in two and a half minutes, we get our London open. If we form a lower low right now, this would be considered our most recent lower high for the market structure shift. Otherwise we have to wait until we get back above the midnight level. It's the midnight level, right? Yeah the indicator midnight level is not right. We have to modify that to 1 a.m. I will push a new update on the indicator so that it's now working fine again with UTC minus five. It's still set to UTC minus four, then we don't have to really worry about all these settings anymore. It will make them work automatically with the CME futures chart. So in one and a half minutes, we get a, that's matching up with the New York open now, perfect, or a midnight open. Mm -mm -mm. Keep it clean. All right, let's see what, what's happening in one minute, basically. If we simply continue lower of this inversion fair value gap, continuing with the market structure, if we get our displacement, Fair value gap entry long. And Q pulled back. Continued lower. We have 50 seconds to go. On ES1, we would have actually gotten a perfect short signal using the Scalper Pro right here on this candle. I would have taken a signal like that if it would have been on YM. Right here on the high, not a secondary signal. Use a super tight stop. Two to one risk reward hit very easily on NQ. Let's see where we've gotten a signal there. Even got one up here. Now NQ is just too volatile for it. Let's see, London opens up in four seconds. Let's leave the chart like it is. On YM, we initially got a push to the upside. On ES, we kept holding the inversion fair value gap. Open up with a bullish volume imbalance here. Take a look at NQ. 
and Q didn't take out the slow. Mm, let me actually copy the indicator from ES over on the Q chart and hide all the drawings. Let the indicator do the work. Perfect. Right on new we uh, new week opening gap. Still playing around with that level. Continued lower from the Asia low. Let's see if we can maybe get some potential SMT divergence. Therefore, we're watching. Mm, previous week's high, previous day's high coming in up here. That's not working now. Let's hide the major FIPS. Take a look at the DXY. The DXY started to reject. That's what we would like to see. 15 minute time frame, but yeah, looking at overall market structure, the displacement would come in if we go below the 1 a.m. low. Five minute time frame. What do we have here? We have a high. Right here, that's where our market structure shift really would start from. So that's a nice little extra confluence here on the DXY. But what we want to see now is that push above this high with this candle close leaf band to fair value gap and then we enter long or we take out the slope and leave this high behind as our lower high for our market structure shift with a fair value gap maybe somewhere around this area but you didn't take out that lower either just yet and until then i'm simply gonna stick or stay in this paper trade adding to the position if we retrace a little higher into this bearish fair value gap right now we don't have a single reason why price should reverse yet market structure is bearish we have a inversion fair value gap midnight VWAP, new york midnight above us paired with a bearish fair value gap and a volume imbalance so in that sense just wait and see yeah <laughs> i hope that won't happen but thanks i will make sure that i yeah i always check that i have that microphone right in front of me so i don't see that bottom left section of my screen yeah i will have to keep that in mind Right, London open me in indecisive as of now. NQ is pushing, market structure would come in on these reds of equal highs right here. Exactly the same on ES, aligned with the midnight level on NQ as well. Now, the midnight level is a little bit higher on NQ. Yeah. IM is pushing the DXY. Let's wait for the candle to close. But really looking at the five minute time frame, knowing we're inside the daily bearish fair value gap. From a high, we pull back, leave a short term low with a higher low to the left and a higher low to the right. Down closing candle, form a higher high, fail to continue higher displays, leaving behind inefficiencies left and right for a nice and Steep retracement, maybe. Like we saw yesterday here, really, on the DXY. We can still have a deep retracement and then still continue to rally to the upside. But that analysis played out really well. And if we take a look at Euro, don't check it anymore. Yeah, eventually we hit our um, 3.25 first reward ratio, targeting these lows. We even hit a four standard deviation. Yeah, 
we just did that from our manipulation. That's awesome precision here from the Euro US dollar. So looking for a pullback here is likely we took out sell side. We had the negative four standard deviation of our last manipulation. If you remember that from yesterday's live stream, ending up at a seven risk to reward. Of course, holding on to a four negative four standard deviation is not what you usually do, but well, if you do, that's a nice winning trade. And we talked about the market structure shift right here, the bearish share value gap paired with the breaker block. We would have had our stop loss right on this high. And with the futures contract, we wouldn't have been stopped out. With CFDs, yeah, you would have been stopped. So you would have had to add a little bit of uh, breathing room above this high. And only if we really, even with spread move above this high, we got stopped out. But this place, bearish share value gap consolidated here for a little bit. And then we finally managed to continue lower after taking out the previous week's high and all that. So pretty cool. We keep an eye on EU throughout this entire 60, those six, entire 66 days. Look for 2022 models. Once we take out significant liquidity, this one played out perfectly. Right now EU is starting to pull back terms of a market structure shift well kind of we can keep an eye on it five minute time frame Boom. we have our bullish value gap right here to take out some highs mm. go back to our dxy chart takes y shift structure now and is pushing back up we have that same fair value gap that we just talk spoke about on the dxy but a bearish share value gap here on the dxy of course tracement up into that for the continuation lower that would help us for higher prices on the indices as well and q made a higher high retracing es basically left behind a doji open up with a bullish volume imbalance and yn yeah not really decisive so watch and see Time to get comfy and watch. We need the displacement here in order to engage. And the displacement would, in a perfect word, really be one up closing candle, maybe two, without too many wicks. So now we're filled with two contracts short. But still on that paper trading account, still assuming market structures continue the way it does until we get our market structure shift and we would shift our bias and could, for example, do exactly the opposite by every pullback to the downside, waiting for higher highs to be formed. DXY starting to reject euro futures contract then fill the bullish share value gap so this was what our entry would look like 10 ticks target a two to one could also just target liquidity for a three to one But let's look at the DXY again. DXY continuing lower could help us for the indices to continue up higher. NQ got really close to the market structure shift level. And he has actually touched the market structure shift level, which is paired here really with the midnight level. So I'm going to get out of this paper trade here. 
what we want to see now is a immediate momentum continuation leaving behind this fair value gap because if we now retrace immediately rebalance this bullish candle here at 305 we yeah wouldn't have the opportunity to create a fair value gap below the market structure shift level that we would like to use as an entry so right now we have to wait for four minutes and see if we can close above this high if we can i'm going to set my buy limit order right here my stop loss below here targeting a two to one would bring us right to the new day opening gap above the asia session high seven points let's see but that only works really if we do not retrace here immediately rebalancing with this candle swick to this candles high not leaving behind a fair value gap we also have that old bearish fair value gap here which now would be a inversion fair value gap a bearish fair value gap right here so yeah really we just want to see that momentum continue and not slow down at all ideally I think I can get ready for the trade day account. I'll take a look at YM as well. YM is also pushing MQ. Didn't take the high yet, leaving behind perfect equal highs. Still yet to take out that midnight level. DXY is continuing lower. So go back to ES. We still have that fair, fair value gap remaining open. Let's see. Close above is all we're looking for. Two and a half minutes to go. Would also be a close above the midnight level. All we need then is a retracement. We look for the highest stop closing candle to become our breaker block. Let's already prepare ourselves mentally. This is our breaker block overlapping nicely with the bullish share value gap that we likely leave behind here. Balance price range as well. This becoming our breaker block. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Our stop loss going all the way down from here to the low would be a 3.25 stop loss <laughs> I think I have to use micros in this case That's why we have it already on our chart. Same level, we took out all these equal highs here. Let's see the close above the midnight level now. We have one minute left. In order to make this a valid setup. MQ is still touching this level. The DXY is now starting to pull back. Hmm. Hmm. But we're pushing. So let me calculate the risk here. We can actually see that the micro contract made a lower low right here. But we're going to stick to the mini. It's only if the mini is closing above our market structure shift level we consider it valid, even though the micro. 30 seconds to go. Our stop loss level price is also based on what we gonna pinch it to the slow right here 3.25 points our two to one 18 seconds to go and using one percent risk and uh, no, a 250 dollar risk need 15 micro contracts good so I'm going to scale in into this position. So I'm not going to buy 15 here. I'm going to buy first five contracts here. 
second five contracts on the bearish uh, bullish share value gap balance price range and no if we get to the main entry which would be our fair value gap gonna add 10 slightly risking a little bit more than the anticipated 250 but we first of all need to get the retracement our breaker block right here that's where i start entering low hanging fruit entry trying to scale in here with micros this is going to be our stop loss so 10 stop we're gonna sell 15 micro contracts here that's why we can just manage our risk a little bit better and yeah once we get filled we also add our take profit target until then yeah, can't really do much we anticipated it but yeah you would sort of have to jump the gun in order to be in now or maybe wait for something on the one minute but even on the one minute we just consolidated here and then we took out the high but we never actually filled a fair value gap so yeah really this would be a gut feeling entry really expecting it to continue higher after this bullish candle nothing wrong with that at all just got to train your gut feeling if we leave behind a bullish share value gap right here like this i would split up my limit orders up there so we took out the spy side right there these equal highs are taken next buy side comes in right here but now we basically wait for the retracement take a look at nq nq hit the midnight level now as well also paired with the daily open VWAP. The DXY hit our bearish share value gap from the market structure shift. So EU likely also give a, gave us a long entry and we're already running nicely in profit. Nice. We should have started trading uh, EU, shouldn't we? <laughs> Maybe we'll do that if we see it really like, yeah, line up with our analysis on live stream. I mean, look at it. Yesterday, catching that free hour today also delivering a nice market structure shift per value gap entry or like i don't know aligned with what we see on the dxy it's not bad ym is pushing up much stronger not not really all the indices push up without returning we could see that happening and simply miss out on our entry we can at least watch the euro futures contract here just watch and see how it would play out. Mm -mm, mm -mm, the invalidation for the short for me would come once we take out the Asia buy side before giving us the real retracement. So now we would like to see the retracement for it to form the beloved left shoulder head right shoulder a 50 percent retracement maybe just towards the midnight level where my first entry limit order is sitting at i'll place that the rest is followed by the fair value gap right here we're gonna leave behind a new bullish share value gap up here but seems like we're just gonna continue to expand No sign of weakness. I'm splitting up this first limit order right here and going to deduct four 
8. Let us scale in with price moving away from us. 43715. Because simply this lowest fair value gap here, I would almost anticipate it to become a breakaway gap. And London is just going to run, maybe only filling the highest fair value gap with that bullish momentum since London opened up basically. That's why I'm yeah, splitting up limit orders. I would still take most of my profits around the Asia session high and the daily opening. Maybe let it run to some more buy side with micros here, but yeah tricky take a look at the euro es and q so just scaling in with three micro contracts right here on this highest bullish value gap that we see right now we still have the breaker block with the lowest bullish value gap as our main entry and four micro contracts get filled once we hit the midnight level as a little bit of a retracement pullback if we check out the 15 minute time frame here our market structure shift would have come in right here as well we get a new 15 minute candle in eight minutes retracement to the midnight for the continuation up higher is what i'm really looking for because this fair value gap down here could really just become a breakaway fair value gap it's already a balanced price range, so price doesn't really have to come back to that level. Getting closer and closer to the Asia session high. If we take that buy, uh, buy side liquidity up here before getting filled, I'm simply going to... That's the trade. And I'm also not going to jump in on this bullish share value gap if we leave on behind right here. I want it paired with the midnight. This inversion, also a balanced price range. Same way as we have it right here. Bearish share value gap, bullish share value gap. Bearish share value gap, we close above. We have a bullish share value gap paired with that. We have our breaker block. Really like this. We have our midnight level below us. So only if we see the retracement, I'd like to enter on that. Let me see how it goes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Discord. All right. Remember, you are still in your paper trading. Uh, no, I'm in trade away. Perfect. Just got that little reminder. <clears throat> yeah, I want to risk 250. I don't want to like fiddle around and every trade is going to be different. It's going to be 250 or at least a $10 variance. That's why I'm yeah using mini uh, micros now. We'll see how that goes. For my winning trades, I want to make 250, at least for a one to one, and not less than I would typically lose on a losing day, which would be 250. I will be back in.
just what I expected to happen. We leave behind a new bullish value gap right at the high. We tick it and we continue higher. I won't start adding up on that highest fair value gap. This would just expose me to too much risk, really. Risk reward ratio also wouldn't be ideal. NQ pulled back, did the same thing here. This could be the fair value gap that delivers into the Asia high. Like I said, I will start adding once we get back towards the midnight level. 15 minute time frame is about to close in two and a half minutes. So let's just be patient. Take a look at our Euro trade. Running, but still struggling to get past. Take a look at the DXY again. While the DXY is moving lower. Our most recent price lag measured from the low to the high. Just hit the 50% there. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. NQ struggling at the New York Open. ES pulling back now. Nice. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's do nice. Okay, we're already starting to get filled. Retrace. Let's see if we can hit the midnight level to get our other four contracts filled. Also hit the breaker block with the midnight level. All right, now we hit our breaker block entry. Our main entry still comes in on the slowest fair value gap. Let's see what we do here now and how we close on a five minute time frame. A close below the midnight level wouldn't be ideal. So at least we're filled now with 50% of our position. Our lowest fair value gap entry would come in right here. We've already took plenty of buy side with the displacement right here. All these equal highs. We still have the Asia session high yet to be taken. So the setup is still really valid for me. Of course, this could have been a manipulation move into buy side without ever needing to take out the Asia high, simply continue lower. Like we sort of did like right here, we take out buy side, display slower now just with more momentum and more volume. Four, three, two, one. So we close back below the midnight. Well, really, after having set our stop loss and our take profit target. We could leave our charts and start working on something else. See if we get filled with the rest. And let the setup play out, develop over time. Hit the breaker block, hit the bullish value gap. We actually close below it and also below this one, which is not ideal. But we now have a new 15 minute candle with a 15 minute bullish share value gap below us. That's lining up with our main entry on that lowest five minute bullish share value gap, balance price range. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Getting a pretty nice bullish reaction off that area, but not filling our lowest bullish share value gap. So in with half the position size already. Wouldn't make sense to me to only force that lowest fair value gap if we have such an aggressive displacement. We have the breaker block, we hit this bullish share value gap, we hit the midnight level. Our analysis still holds up. That's all we need. If we manage to get back to break even on that account, that would be nice. If we hit that target for our two to one, the Asia session buy side. 
yesterday we lost 150 so let's see if we can make that back today dxy mm, looks like it wants to continue lower and this little way of where i add micros will only add a minimal amount of more risk to my drawdown you could also split up your risk on the way to the downside say you want to exit with five contracts down here split it up a little bit because really if we get down to this wick slow we not we, we'd need a lot of luck for it to bounce somewhere again here without taking the sell side and then continuing into our direction so if you enter with micro and minis and you only enter with one contract yeah then it makes sense placing it right here at the low otherwise no not really Nice. Well done, H. Uh, Willig. That's what I would have done as well if I would be trading on with the mini. Simply place it on a breaker paired with the midnight level. But because I chose to do the micros today to scale into the trade without ever filling that lowest fair value gap, at least we got in partially. Breaker block. Stop loss, four and a half points, five points to the target. Hmm. Be content with that. But really, what we do now is London session put in low. We measure our manipulation to the upside from our lowest low to our market structure shift level. We switch over here to the standard deviations and see. <laughs> do you see that? <laughs> How perfectly that's matching up. This is our previous day's high, this orange line. And this is our previous week's high. So where we retrace to now with this displacement, measuring three and a half and four standard deviations to the upside. That is perfectly to the fucking tick delivering us into this liquidity. Which one, yeah, well, since we're not filled with the entire position, I'm going to secure, of course, profits up here, but I'm going to let them run. Like, it's really rare that you see that. We measure our manipulation. We see if any of these standard deviations really, really align up with any of the major buy side liquidity targets that we have. Do you see that? Like, that really gets me excited right now. That's like, if we go back to our Euro US dollar chart. Four standard deviations, where do we end up reverting? Is that fucking insane? Like, just measuring our highest displacement, being respected. Here, seven to one risk reward, done. And now we bounce off this level, found our market structure shift, bullish share value gap already hitting a yeah, almost a 1.5 risk to reward. Like, come on. Go back to ES. We're still, of course, not out of the woods yet, but nice reaction of the midnight level. I don't know. Really, 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 really makes me want to hold maybe two or three micro contracts up until the previous day's high from our London session low. We had this sort of downtrend during the entire Asia session without a tick to the upside, putting in the low of the day and then expansion to the upside. We'll see. We will see. ICT all in one. Oh, this really gets me amped up. That's picture perfect like hitting both these levels perfectly to the tick you know how low the probability is that based on this last movement to the downside the manipulation that's what we label as the manipulation and if we project standard deviations based on that perfectly hitting the previous day's high and the previous week's high well call it random if you want but 
I very much like that. Yeah, it makes sense. You had the standard entry. Did you get filled on that lower fair value gap? On this one down here. We never touched it. Not even on the micro. Or just this fair value gap right here. The market structure shift fair value gap. I get it. That didn't fill. Well, maybe we come still down to this level. I would still anticipate because the standard deviations line up so nicely for it to play out. We'll see though. Check out the one minute time frame. But those are the nice things that you would like to see when seeing your manipulation lining up with higher time frame liquidity pools. Like said, set and forget. We're pretty much done now. We've done our due diligence. Now it's only managing the trade, watching it. I don't know if, uh, Ryan, about you not getting filled on that loss for value gap, we, it could still happen. So, yeah, don't chase in right up here. But, yeah, really the reason why I decided to split up the risk, it's because I saw it too many times already just touching the midnight level and this bullish fair value gap right here and the breaker block without ever coming back into that breakaway gap all the way at the, to the downside here i just saw it too many times and i can't see it another time where i have my limit order set down here and i'm surprised that we bounce from this area we have the midnight level paired here we have the breaker block perfectly aligned with that we have our midnight open weave up with that we have a bullish share value gap with that. I just cannot yeah, sit here and watch it once more time where I place my entry on a fair value gap that's not getting filled. So that's why this morning I decided to go with micros. And yeah, still have my main position coming in at the slowest fair value gap. But in case we get that bounce off the breaker paired with the midnight, at least I... And I'm in with a partial. Or you do it like um, uh, uh, Ulrich, who simply placed his limit order on the midnight level, aligned with water's confluence. And even if, it re if it's retracing a little bit lower, yeah, your risk to reward is screwed up. But it's only a difference of one point. It's not going to be the make or blow decision for your account. One point difference. Your take profit target is going to be a little bit higher depending how you take profit based on standard deviations based on session liquidity after taking out the low now you want to see asia high be taken and you're content with something like five points entry of the midnight level to the asia high now five points 250 bucks if you enter with a mini i'd be content with that of course you could let it rock to your risk to reward New day opening gap, haven't touched that at all yet. And Q is pushing as well. So, yeah, like we said, that lowest fair value gap. Oftentimes, once we see that aggressive momentum already, tends to become the breakaway gap. And my rules don't state that I always have to enter on that lowest fair value gap. It's the ideal risk to reward ratio entry, but also the entry that gets missed most often in these scenarios and then i just adjusted to what i feel and what i see on the chart if we do not if we wouldn't have gotten such a aggressive displacement yeah we likely would have filled that lowest fair value gap like we did let me find an example like right here slow and steady we only have one fair value gap available that's why it worked we had one fair value gap even up higher also a balanced price range but i still would have chosen this one make sure i get in took the asia high displaced boom
Mm, so let me see if I'm in with seven micros here. That's almost one mini. Five points. Seven times 1.25. 8.75 per tick. Times 21 ticks. That ends up at 183. That, so if we hit that profit target, basically the Asia buy side would be 7.25. Uh, no, I have to measure correctly. Come on, what's happening? Yeah. So from our entry to the Asia buy side, that's 20 ticks. 20 ticks. Times 8.25 is 165. So we would be back at break even. Yeah, we'll see how I'm going to manage this trade. Maybe we even get filled with the entire position size. But with ICT trading, that's one thing I've learned is once you hit like session liquidity, the current basically the high of the day, disregarding this little, yeah, the opening basically because the volume at the open is insignificant. The Asia volume is also basically insignificant compared to what we see during London and during New York. So I don't know. I just like to make sure to get paid entering with one mini contract. Well, there's a best case scenario. Best case scenario, in my opinion, would be previous day's high, even the previous week's high, because we see the standard deviations line up perfectly with that for a four to one risk to reward trade. After a Asia session has been, high has been hit, we could, for example, move our stop loss to break even, or once our two to one has been hit, and we, yeah, simply go for that ex best case scenario liquidity pool or we take partial so we make sure we secure some profit once we take a low hanging fruit but the low hanging fruit targets are most of the time the ones that will be hit with a higher probability while the best case scenario um, outcome like a negative four standard deviation is not hit perfectly or with the highest probability all the times so i will simply scale out likely with these micro contracts that's the plan i have in my head right now we have the new week opening gap aligning with that um asia by side liquidity a two to one would come in right here but that's kind of in the middle of nowhere like when trading trading ICT concepts, I don't know, these fixed mechanical strategies, the entries work, but re in regards to your take profit target sometimes, doesn't make sense. That's why it's good to partial. Lines up with a negative two standard deviation. That's the only thing here. Otherwise, it's between liquidity pools. Makes sense to make sure to get paid, take a few partials. Let it continue because yeah, possibility is there that we've seen the low for a session at least, or maybe even the low of the day, and we continue to expand further to the upside. So once we hit the Asia session high, I'm going to scale out to contracts. Still leave my buy limit down here um, and my stop loss. <coughs> because my entry then came in down here where it would have been a two to one risk reward up here. So now this would have been my stop loss. Two to one right here at the high of the new week opening gap, six and a half points. It never got filled down here. We took our low hanging fruit entries, bullish fair value gap, midnight breaker block, where all the confluence lined up. Mm. So our average entry came in right here. 
So still from the slow to the high to standard deviations, but the level is into our two to one. Just to make sure I'm securing some profits, I'm gonna take partials right at the Asia high. And yeah, take up or take off more contracts. Once we hit the two to one, right here at four three eight three. Gonna let this rock. I really like how we spotted the standard deviations lining up with the previous day, previous week's high. Normally that only happens to me when I'm in hindsight mode. <laughs> so you look at the setup and then you measure your standard deviation and you see, ah, that's why we hit the previous week's high, previous day's high. So because the account is still fresh, we're not like, I don't know, at the brink of blowing it. I will give this trade a chance going for a four risk to reward ratio with the last micro contract. We'll see how that goes. If I would only be with in with one mini, that wouldn't be worth the risk to me really. I would simply secure once I made my two to one risk to reward ratio and I don't know, ideally partial once we hit session liquidity like we do right here. Let's see. NQ pushing also strongly and keep in mind NQ already took out that previous week's high and here's that previous day's high for NQ. We retraced into the bullish share value gap after our or back also into our breaker block almost from yesterday PM session. We'll see so many ifs and yeah a friend of mine <laughs> had a very good qu quote on uh, all that thinking while you're trading. Trading is simple until you start to think. When you start thinking, then it becomes super hard. Because then it could be this, 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 this and that. And you, yeah, I don't know. You start overthinking basically. Now let's just watch price action here. What's the time? It's 3.45, so we get a new hourly candle here at 4. Take a look at our Euro trade. Euro trade is running nicely. Did we already hit a 2 to 1? No, but we are about to. It would be the second winning day in a row on our Euro. Yeah, solo with the 2022 model. Keeping it simple. Nice. Maybe start a Apex account for... No, I've got two funded Apex accounts now. I'm pretty sure at least. I think I'm on day seven. Yeah, well. Not going to do that now. I'm going to do that after the stream. Checking that. Maybe I'm going to use one of them for EU 2022 models. Why not? Uh, I want to use the trade copier. Well, got to think about that. Oftentimes, yeah, but it only, what Ulrich said here, the standard deviation tool, let's start here, I will only use the breaker block in the future as entry if the first fair value gap is below the breaker block uh, level for the long setup. Yes, this makes sense, but yeah, this only happens if we get these very, 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 okay, we hit our 2 to 1 on EU with our 2022 model three to one buy side liquidity which should really help us to continue higher on es as well this only happens if we have one two three bullish share value gaps or more than one bullish share value gap within our displacement lag and all of these bullish share value gaps are relatively big looking at the price action that we got before only very small candles small fair value gaps we have our breaker block the lowest fair value gap entry fair value gap is below the breaker block. That's a good reasoning if it's below the breaker block. But if it's the only one, I would still use that fair value gap. That's my rule. If it's the only one, 
and we wouldn't have the midnight level aligned with that, I would still pick the lowest one. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see. The standard deviation tool is from the regular Fibonacci retracement right here. Uh, Fibonacci retracement and then a measure from the low to high with these settings right here. Can disregard those. Those are for the retracement. You just want to measure standard deviations. You have 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4. Mm, almost at the Asia high. I think you almost took out the Asia high. YM as well. So that's all lining up nicely. EU is still pushing. EU is really fascinating me here. Like four standard deviations to the tick. Market structure shift, displacement, hit our two to one. Like, come on. <laughs> come on. Mm, 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 mm. Go back to our Discord questions. Yes, if we have multiple fair value gaps, then it can happen that that first fair value gap becomes a breakaway gap. That's still where I would place my lowest entry on. And scale into it most of the time. Mm -hmm. TP of five handles is pretty solid. It depends what your average stop loss will be. If your average stop loss ends up Let's say for the London session, most of the time, five points, maybe a little bit more than that, sometimes a little bit less than that, then you're just trading a one-to-one -one risk reward. Works well, but yeah, I don't know. I've been doing that for a while, simply closing after five points. If you enter with more than one contract, taking a partial after five points is always good because then you made sure you got paid with the apex intraday trailing drawdown you also do not have to worry about losing some parts of your drawdown if it doesn't hit your two to one it comes back to break even mm, a break even stop out i'm not really a fan of that anymore in rare cases i move my stop loss to break even because it happened so many times that i've been tapped out at break even and we still respected the breaker block fair value gap blah 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 like we, for example, saw on EU yesterday, right here at this high. Like, oh yeah, okay, now here it wouldn't have made sense to move to break even. Maybe after taking out this 3 a.m. low, moving our entry back to break even, we would have been touched. And yeah, well, simply stick to the trade. It's either win or lose. Fuck break even basically. Then it's a pay for weight. Mm. Lots of liquidity at 1522. 1522 on NQ. 1522. Right here. Now that would be the Asia session high. New day opening gap. We'll see. We scale out. You get there, Ryan. Yeah, we looked at Euro US dollar because I have the DXY open and we already look at the DXY and most of the time the DXY is just doing the exact opposite. I had EU is doing the exact opposite of the DXY. Right here, we would have hit the two to one to the tick right here. With futures, that would have been enough. With CFDs, not really. Mm, yes, that didn't hit the Asia high yet. We open up with a new volume imbalance. It's 355, so let's be aware that we get a new hourly momentum candle. What does the hourly candle look like right now? Pretty bullish. Hourly bearish value gap. Take that buy side. Expect a retracement. Continue higher. That's low key what I'm looking for. I'm just going to scale out with the Asia buy side, with my micro positions. I'm not going to secure it all. I just like it too much and I really want to participate in holding 
also using this as a training exercise for myself, holding on to a trade or simply set and forget. Even if I lose, it's not going to be the end of the world. I'm going to scale out as we're moving up. We'll see. We will see. And Q likely hit the Asia high and is pushing nicely through that. We likely see the same thing on ES very soon. And yeah, Ulrich is totally right. Eventually with the 2022 model, you will get funded. That's just a matter of discipline, sticking to the plan. And yeah. And then you're going to end up at the same stage. You get funded. And then you realize, oh, you only made it to step one. Like, I thought I'm, I thought I made it. I'm funded, nice. But it's still getting these payouts day in, day out. Yeah, most of the time it just ends up being one trade, uh, one trade per day. Um, it depends. Hmm. What I like to do is to have separate accounts for New York and London. I'd say if London was a nice winning trade, hit you two to one, call it a day, enjoy the rest of your day. You made your profit for the day. No reason trying to force anything during New York. So yeah, I'd say if London is a win for a beginner trader, let it let it sit in and come back tomorrow. Enjoy the day. But I'm going to do one trade per session. So I'm going to be trading both london and new york on the same account and see how that goes didn't hit the asia high and q did also filled in this entire new day opening gap yes it's still lacking behind mm -mm 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 -mm. asia session high comes in at four three seven nine our sell limit or scale out limit is one tick below that or above that. And really trying to get detached from being worried about the outcome of every single trade. That's really what this 66 days series is about. It helps me a lot as well because usually you lose track of the bigger picture you try to force something because you made a loss today and blah 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 we just stick to the plan wait for 66 days to be over follow this plan uh, this plan execute properly based on the 2022 model and yeah see what we end up with maybe even some payouts with trade day we will see only time can tell Mm -mm -mm. you got a little pullback let's see if we keep holding support on these order blocks down closing candles within the up move after the 2022 model presented itself tend to hold support we close above we kept holding support so we expect something similar from this down closing candle right here to continue higher or we simply reverse NQ took out the Asia high. YM didn't take out the Asia high just yet, but it's consolidating. This would be a signal where a one bar stop would be guaranteed death. Wouldn't take that with a one bar stop. For everyone that's into the Scarpa Pro strategy, doesn't make sense. We can see that we're tightening up. We're sort of forming a going back to classical charting patterns. A little triangle here bullish flag being the power triangle we get smaller and smaller and smaller bodies all inside bars theoretically for the continuation expansion that that's the anticipated move really i'm not going to move my stop loss to break even even if we get down to my limit order to that lowest fair value gap i'm going to enter i don't care it's either win or lose for me We'll see. Take a look at the DXY here. 
the XY is pulling back. With the new hourly candle, we spoke about that. So the new hourly candle here on NQ took out the buy side, hit that liquidity. Um, we've been talking about on the Discord, 355, new hourly candle delivers the pullback. Same here on ES. 355 we spoke about watching out for that new hour momentum let's look how the hourly candle closed close right here open with a bullish volume imbalance expecting a retracement is healthy so no reason to stress out or worry or anything that's just unnecessary it's just one trade on day two Sounds like a good plan, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Da -da 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 -da. Trading view, we're pulling back. NQ is pulling back as well. DXY is pulling back. I'm going to make me another cup of coffee. I will be back in like three minutes or something. We'll see what the new hourly candle does. Retrace maybe to even hit our fair value gap entry. I'm going to stick to the trade. A example, a reasoning why I would do that. what London session was that <laughs> this one right here nope uh, this one we took out the Asia low and London really started this rally to the previous day's high we got the 2022 model short into where where did we start to bounce our old London 2022 model right here we had our market structure shift with those two fair value gaps but we actually never ended up filling them during London we ended up filling them during New York So for us here, if we would have been trading London, it would have simply be a no trade day. We would have had set our limit orders on this fair value gap, wouldn't have hit it. And what did we do during New York? We got our 2022 model short into that sell side, testing that those fair value gaps and delivered higher. So yeah, I don't know. Makes sense to me. I'm going to let it rock. Mm -hmm. Rip off both weave ups, midnight level. We hit one standard deviation to the upside. We hit the new week opening gap here on ES. We still have a few ticks for us to hit the Asia buy side. We can't expect price to pump up without ever retracing a little bit. Our stop loss is secured at this, according to the 2022 model, um, protected low. We have our standard deviations to the upside. I'm going to scale out because today it's just lining up too perfectly. Haven't seen that in a very long time. So screw it. I'm taking that risk. I'm going to partial out. We'll see how that ends up. Been at it for two hours. Yep, that's exactly what it should be like where you make, uh, well, I better go back to my normal job where I make, now I understood it, boring, consistent profits. Eventually, that's going to be what trading should become. You show up, you take your trade, but yeah, you're not limited with a specific hourly rate. You show up, you take your trades day in, day out. And make these consistent profits, sometimes consistent losses, but you, I don't know, stick to the bigger picture and let it play out. It's a risk, definitely. There's no such thing as a guaranteed monthly paycheck. Even if you're sick or you're on holiday or whatever, you still get your monthly paycheck. It's a security. 
of trading, you don't have that security. All right, I'm going to be back in a couple of minutes. We'll see how it plays out. And let it rock. We didn't hit the Asia high yet. Pulling back to the VWAP. And you did hit the Asia high. YM also didn't. The DXY is pushing up strong. Gotta admit. Very strong actually. 15 minute time frame. Had a decent pullback. One hour time frame as well. Hit the one hour bullish share value gap. And continuing its journey. Towards the 50% off the daily bearish share value gap. <clears throat> kind of makes me think. <clears throat> That ES is not going to continue higher. But like I said, I'm going to set and forget. The worst thing that could happen is a $250 loss that we make back within one single winning trade. So nothing to lose really.
Can I tell him back? Yeah, let's see what happens. I'm also still gonna let it rock. I'm gonna end the live stream here very soon. So guys, if you have any questions, please ask me now. I'm gonna take my dog to the vet for his monthly checkup. There's no point in me sitting here. Is that gonna be a win or a loss? We didn't hit the Asia buy side yet. So the setup for me is still in play. We see that the XY is rapidly continuing further to the upside. But yes, is still yeah, forming a higher low here really. Yeah, ES is pushing, so we likely see that the uh, EU continuing further to the downside. We hit our 2 to 1 risk reward, looking at the 5 minute time frame to the tick. Low hanging fruit, we formed a equal low right here. So looking for shorts somewhere inside of these fair value gaps here. Be a nice continuation play. He expected the XY to continue higher on ES. Yeah, we'll see what happens on NQ. NQ is looking much stronger than ES right now. Our stop loss should pre protect that at the slow. YM is also pulling back now, not having taken that Asia session high. We'll see. I also leave this um, limit entry on this lowest fair value gap. Not worried. So, guys, do you have any more questions for this live stream? Thank you guys for the feedback. Yeah, every trading day is offers different opportunities and I don't know, simply applying one forced or yeah, very fixed model with ICT. It's not really best thing to do, I'd say. Price action is different every day and in the end of the day we are price action traders using ICT concepts. So yeah, I don't know, I'd say we, ha we should have a little bit of freedom with our rules, a little bit with our entry, our partials, how we manage our risk. Because on some days we simply, yeah, we're in so much bearish momentum that going anything above a 2 to 1 or maybe just even 5 points is more than we could ask for if we're in a higher time frame bearish trend. It doesn't make sense to go for a 5 risk reward. But if we're in a higher time frame uptrend and we get a 2022 long model long, securing a partial at 2 to 1 and letting it rock to maybe a 3 to 1 can make sense because we are in line with the higher time frame trend. So, yeah, we're just going to see how this plays out. We know the entry. I'm going to upload the recording now to YouTube. It's either going to be a $250 loss or a little win. We will see. Also keep in mind, I think today, <laughs> not not a financial advice. It's never a financial advice. Um, what did I want to say? I think I received an Apex email that the that I got funded with the account and that the Apex celebration sale is ending tomorrow. Yeah, sale ends on the 7th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. And also the Take Profit Trader, 40% discount and no activation fee is also ending today. I'm not sure about the time. Let me check my emails here quickly. So if you want to get a last minute 90% discount, it's likely be going to be a couple of weeks before Apex does another 90% discount. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Where's Take Profit Trader? They usually send me emails with that stuff. So if you want to get a last minute challenge, then now would be the time. Yeah, we're getting closer and closer to that lower fair value gap fill. NQ is also continuing lower. This might have just been weird and we continue to gravitate lower now. But I'm, yeah, like I said, if it wouldn't have moved so much to the upside, we'd still be theoretically waiting for our entry. It didn't hit the buy side liquidity we wanted. So I'm going to let this limit order sit. Even before then, 
if we would have got filled here and immediately continued lower, we would have had the same outcome. It would have simply been a losing trade. We wouldn't have hit our first partial target. So my opinion, we're all good. Even if we get filled and stopped out, so be it. Next winning trade is going to cover this loss. Thinking in the bigger picture. All right, guys. That's going to be it for today. Thanks very much for joining in. I'm going to be back for the New York session. We'll see if the trade played out by them. Otherwise, yeah, we're up for another trade. All right, guys. Until later. Bye.